What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction. Back with some more U2. And we're going back to the Joshua Tree, 1987. Once again, shout out to both Adams who've been sharing the U2 material with me. And the next tune is With or Without You, a track I know the title phrase from. I can hear Bono singing it. I don't remember the larger expanse of the track other than to remember it has a bit of that same transcendent, uplifting, very emotional quality, which I have to say, the opening three tunes, opening two, and this one, at least the sort of scale I'm remembering it on, feels like such a remarkable opening and, you know, development or uh, crystallization of their sound. So yeah, um, again, there will be parts here, surely, that I don't recall or that will only, um, or will be new to me in the moment, but ultimately, this is a song I've heard before. I've probably heard it a handful of times over the years. Uh, but maybe always in passing or in part, it's, you know, not having any of their albums prior to this deep dive. Um, it's not a tune I would have sat down and given a proper listen to. So either way, I'm looking forward to it. Let's listen. This is With or Without You. Oh, and to think about the title just for a moment, it suggests there's some constancy, some inevitability of an attitude, a condition, or a circumstance whether or not the presence of another person is there. So obviously that person, you know, it could be a, a more religious concept or it could be, um, you know, not necessarily about any one person per se, but yeah, it suggests that whatever the attitude or disposition is, it will be unchanged with or without you. So either way, let's see what I can catch on a first listen or a, you know, first proper listen. This is you 2 with or without you from the 1987 album, The Joshua Tree. in your side I'll wait for you Slide of hand and twist of fate On a bed of nails she makes me wait And I wait without you
word that I remember, of course. acceptable fade out, meaning it was just repeating the same measure, it faded out gradually, it left you with a sense of the atmosphere of the song. So yeah, um, I don't even mind the end, uh, even though I'm not particularly fond of fade outs. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more than the tune I remembered. I remembered the sort of middle level of his vocals of saying the title phrase with or without you, though the you give yourself away, like that refrain came back to me when it started. It's like, oh, I like, I've, I remember this part of the tune now that it comes. Um, but yeah, it feels like maybe lyrically it's simpler than I was wondering in advance. It feels like it might just be that idea of like, I can't live without you, but I can't live with you because we have these, you know, we run into these entanglements or we have these incompatibilities or we end up, you know, coming to, you know, um, ahead in terms of conflict or something, but then when you try to move beyond, you know, look past and, you know, move into a um, separate area, then it's like, oh, wait a minute, like, you know, I, like, I can't do this, I can't, like, go forward in life without this person, even if there are issues, so it feels like maybe that's where it is. Um, again, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that there's, you know, um, lyrics which can be taken on different levels. I feel like, you know, a lot of um, well-written songs have lyrics that can be taken more situationally or more conceptually, but um, yeah, in the moment it felt a bit more like you and me, we just have this thing where, you know, I can't live with you or without you, but um, either way, uh, very powerful vocals, and when he gets to that, you know, uh, really expressive delivery in the latter stages of the tune. It's just crazy. I did not remember that. So, yeah, and the intro too. Like, I didn't quite remember the the sonic character of the intro. Once that, like, kind of high, um, I think it was a guitar line, and certainly that, like, warm, sort of acoustic sounding guitar, um, I don't know, it's probably electric, but it has that, um, like, simple, soft sound to it. Um, when that started, it's like, okay, like, definitely, you know, I've heard this tune, but, um, yeah, I really do love the guitar work, and again, like, so they're using keyboards now, like, is that, you know, because I remember when I first started reacting to them, I didn't know, like, maybe they were synth rock from the very beginning, but, you know, people mention at this point, you know, they're just a traditional band, if you will, but surely some of the layers in this one are, you know, keyboards. Um, so yeah, interested again by the development and crystallization of the sound they've already been, um, you know, so masterfully uh, presenting in the first few albums. So again, what a crazy opening to this album. The first three tunes are all um, very incredible. And even though I had not heard Going Back, um, Where the Streets Have No Name, um, knowing how big of a hit that one was, and then knowing on some level the next two, and remembering them as like, ooh, yeah, they're kind of like big epic U2 tracks, right? 
Um, it's just a crazy opening to the record. So yeah, shout out to this record so far already. Shout out to the YouTube folks. I do appreciate the patience. Obviously, I'm just going through so many deep dives, but I know people you know, want to keep this deep dive going with momentum. I will continue to try to do that as much as I can. Uh, let me look in the track listing to see what we have next, because in the moment, I don't remember. So the next tune in the track list is Bullet the Blue Sky, which is an interesting phrase, like the way it's put together syntactically. You know, it sounds like a superhero or something, but it's referring to the blue sky, which is ultimately an expression that has its own set of associated meanings. In any case, uh, we'll think about that when we come back next time. Let me know what you think of this, and I will see you then. Peace.